Okay, so let's go from the very beginning. How do I do this process? I'm going to take a micellar water, which is one of my favorite ones that I use. The reason micellar water, no matter what time of day I do this, because I have to make sure her skin oil is even. What I don't want, and if you're sitting at home right now, what I'd like you all to do is feel, even if you cleansed your face an hour ago, or you've been awake for five hours, I want you all right now to feel the oil on your eyelids. It's everyone in the room's doing that. Um, I just cleansed yours, but your eyelids are so oily. They're like oily, whatever your T-zone oil is, that is going to be worse. Oil kills makeup people, oil destroys eyeshadow. Okay, her skin is quite dry, so I would use a Naveen, or I would use, I'm gonna use my Walina, which is a really beautiful organic skin product. This is a really, really um, nice thick moisturizer. Now. I'm gonna pretend that I don't know Jasmine's skin is dry because like I said, most women, what they think they have and what they have is different. So if you have an oily T-zone, use a really nourishing moisturizing cream here, all over the chest and use, sorry, I've got greasy, dirty hands here. Um, use a one for oily skin through that T-zone. That's a, it's a trick that I do because I personally get that. Okay. I'm just gonna throw this one in the mix. This is my new find, I'm so in love with this. It's Dermalogica, it's a primer, but it has sunscreen, um, and it just makes the skin feel velvety. So we'll put a link up. This is my new favorite. So cleanse the skin, and you can just put this all over. One of my favorite um, foundations for um, warmer skin tones, I just did Frida Pinto, I worked out with Kelly Rowland. Um, a couple of my favorites are, I'll put them straight up, is this is a Japanese one called Kogendo. Um, these are pretty much my favorite, the NARS, because when you get to these warm golden skin tones, some foundations are just not warm enough. They just have this gap where they're perfect for pale skin, great for really deep skin, but in between the two pink. This is really important that afterwards, all this looks beautifully the same. If you had to choose, do I go, if I had to choose lighter than the body or darker than the body. If in doubt, guys, go lighter. You can always darken later. And if you wanna be really tricky, this is for people a little bit more advanced. If you've got her skin tone or darker, I do like to do a mix where I will darken the exterior and lighten the interior. Her color, this is St. Moritz by NARS. So this is what you do when you test makeup up. You put it here and you shouldn't see anything. If anything, you should just see the skin evening out. And here's a really good tip. It's like what we gotta go back to our decision. How much coverage and what reflection? Her skin is so beautiful. The biggest crime would be to cover that skin up. Always, for me, the crime is too much makeup every time. Um, and you should always test your makeup in natural light. So, I want her skin to look as sheer as possible. If you've got blemishes or spots or pigmentation, we're not gonna worry about those now. The, the magic in this is having the good skin look amazing and just healthy, and then we work on the other areas separately. Sometimes I see girls who've got like a little bit of blemishes and they'll just put thick foundation all over. Now, I've gotta be on time today because Jasmine has gotta to go to work after here. All right, so this is my St. Moritz NARS. Here's the brush. As a makeup artist, I love this. Close your eyes for me. Now I'm gonna go cover your lips to see you don't get foundation lips. I know it looks like I'm being quite aggressive. This is the softest. It feels like a kimono. It is so soft that dermatologists recommend they can use this on their skin if they've had a peel or they have laser. Um, so I've had a few dermatologists that say this is the only brush that they recommend. What I like about this shape though, guys, is I always like to go straight behind the ear because that can be really pale. And if you're having your hair up and someone takes a photo from you, you've got these little white light bulbs behind your ear. So it's really good. That's great for jawline shape. You can go straight down the neck really quickly. And if you have to do the body there, it's just so fast. And I'm not worrying about coverage. All I'm looking at with my glasses is the perfect skin to look even more beautiful. The other one, I call this like my brush for dummies. And not, I don't mean it like that. What I mean is like after doing a lot of fashion weeks and you've got 7,000 models and everyone needs foundation, what I'll sometimes do, this is, if you, this is perfect if you're doing makeup just on you. Can I give that to you, Jasmine? And just polish away. 
and you can't use it the wrong way. Actually, Jenny, my assistant, said, oh, do you use this under the eyes? This actually brushes for hooded lids, which we'll talk about in another video, but I've just started to use it under the eyes and I love it. It's 6.5, 6 yeah? Love this. Okay, the reason it's really important to use the foundation up under the eye, no matter what foundation you use, because it's gonna knock out any little bit of discoloration. Even if it knocks out 20%, look down for me. Even if it knocks out 20%, that means it's 20% less concealer you're going to need. You don't want to do just foundation and then a completely different concealer colour because what can happen, you get white panda eyes. Or I'm not worrying about coverage, like I said, I'm just getting everything even. Okay, so now concealing. You want to have something that's one shade, maximum two shades lighter than your skin tone. The reason for this is, especially if you're doing with this, dealing with this beautiful golden skin tone, if you get a concealer slightly too light, you're going to go grey or ashy under the eyes. Concealing does fall into the highlighting category because you're lightening parts of the face. She's quite young. She's got a. All I have to do here is take out the blue colour underneath. Under the eyes, you can have different issues that come up. Now, obviously on her skin, we're very lucky. We'll be covering, there'll be so many models I'll be using that have what we call pillowing under the eyes or deep ocular cavities, and they all require different things. So these are, the two, these are my favorite concealers at the moment. The ones that I like to use, I like to use um, NARS. These are great. These are quite creamy, give a nice coverage. These ones in the pots, I'm loving a little bit more. Um, they cover more. They do dry a little bit matte though, so just be careful on dry skins. They're my favorite. So concealer brush. The reason it's this size, this actually took a little bit of um, science and a few questions from a few cosmetic and plastic surgeons. And what this brush will do, it's sort of the same width your finger is, but it will lighten the perfect distance between most bottom eyelids and the ocular cavity. It is so essential that if you've got a bit of a sunken eye or when you smile and your muscle raises, that means you get that deep hole, it's really important you don't conceal over that point because you don't want to lighten this area. Basically, in theory, if you're quite new, anything lighter than the skin tone pulls forward on the face. Anything darker pushes back. And concealing is lightening the skin. These are great. These are from Kidology. And these little sponges are, are fantastic. I only like the ones that when you put water in them, they blow up. Now, I don't put concealer in this part of the face because it's a mobile area. Any part of the skin that's mobile, that moves a lot, you don't want to put concealer on. Concealing, guys, is only to cover darkness or blemishes. It's not for wrinkles and lines. One place, though, I do like to put concealer in is this outer corner. Now, as we get older, this part sinks in. So I'm going to lighten this part of the skin here. And... Up. I'm going to put a tiny bit. I'm just blink as much as you like, doesn't it? I always let my models blink. Okay, be really gentle. I think people feel you and they feel your energy. And if you're just rough around the eyes, people think you don't care. So that's really important to keep it, um, be really gentle to touch. So I'm covering in here, outer corner, and just along that lash line. And what it does, size up for me. If you're tired, you can get really red just on that. You can see just near the eyelash line, it's a nice way to conceal it. So you can see I'm being really gentle, but I'm also being extremely direct where I put product. And that's the difference between good makeup and great makeup. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a really soft wash on the eyelid. Now this concealer, the great thing about this one, I can buff it down to be quite sheer. Do not put concealer on your eyelids if you can't thin them down. Just look down to your knees, Jasmine. The reason I don't like my models to close their eyes, as you just close for one second, the eyes go like little sultanas. So I like to keep the eyelids, even though you're young, look straight down for me. When you look down like that, the eyelids are more stretched. Now the reason I'm doing this, as you can see, it just removes any blue-red undertone to the eyelid. So when I put an eyeshadow or anything on that eyelid now, it's going to be really true to life. Okay, so I'm going to let all that settle. Now I'm going to lightly darken around the edge. So that was Maritz number one. This is, how do you pronounce that one? And uh, Okay, medium two. <laughs> medium two. I foundations, um, they do drive me a little bit crazy, the ones that are all weird names. I like numbers. 
I like numbers. Like the Kogan Go, the numbering system just confuses me. Um, and when I'm in a hurry, so what I do is I'll get my, these are another um, claim to Muji. Um, I will put them in these bottles and put the name on the top, but I'll number them myself. So if something's called Saucy Beige or Tanted Tint or whatever, I'll just call it one yellow, two yellow. Because if I'm in a hurry, I can't know the name. So if you've got a warm skin tone, get a fa always have a foundation that's one shade darker. And we're just going to put it around the forehead. Because when skin tans, it actually tans more. This is one of the highest areas of tanning. And just by doing that, funny enough, the whole skin looks more tanned. So if I want to make her look more colored, I want, it's not about just hitting bronzers on cheeks. We're going to cover that in our next session when we do bronzing and cheek colors. But to make a skin just look tanned all of a sudden, don't do bronzer on your cheek, do it around your hairline. Now let's say I put a concealer on and I haven't given, it hasn't given me enough coverage. Okay, you don't want to, if you've got to keep going back and back and back, because your concealer's not covering, the concealer you're using is not, doesn't have enough pigment. You always need to find something that covers, but use less of it. These NARS ones are probably, this is one of the strongest, this one and there's another one, Danessa Merrick's. I'll pull it, the coverage is incredible. Um, oh, I'm gonna pull it out here. These, these are really cream. I'll put a link up. Danessa Merrick's as well. These are really good. There is one, however, one step up. It's by Cryolan, and I have it here. I'll be using this. It's called Dermacolor. These cover tattoos. Um, if you're someone who's really dark under the eyes and just really struggles to get it, go into a Cryolan store, someone who specializes in covering tattoos, because they know you have this brilliantly, and get them to get you an apricot color. And anything peachy like this, size up for me, will just take that blueness just down a notch. Sometimes you can put it on underneath as well and really gently with the skin. Now, I am not going to powder under her eyelids. I'm not going to do baking under there. Okay, that's a very, it's a different aesthetic. Um, she doesn't need it. And I don't want her eyelids underneath to look powdered. And yes, I hear that, oh, but it doesn't set it. It doesn't matter. If I'm doing a bride, if I'm doing an actress, my the goal is, is I never want anyone to know when I did her makeup. I want everyone to assume, even in a photo shoot, that I did her makeup five minutes before and it's super fresh. Like, like for me, I crease in about oh, 45 minutes to an hour. But guess what I do? I have a little beauty blender and every half an hour, I just go like this, that's it. If I have a bump or a concealer and it comes off, I just reconceal it. If I get creases through here, what I do for models on set, I make them do this. And I just go in, got it for me? Yep, and I squeeze it out. Use less and it's maintenance. Keep a mirror. If you get oily, use blotting papers. I'm gonna show you a powder. It's gonna blow your mind in a minute. So we put mascara, we craline, took all the oil. We put a sunscreen primer on and a bit richer around the edges. We did a light foundation that matched her skin tone. We darkened around the edge. We put a concealer, a cream blush, and th that you can use your fingers as well. Wash on the eyelids. I'll just do one last thing. All right, so what I wanna show you is this. So we've done our makeup and during the day we feel, oh, hang on, we're a bit shiny. This little product is in, oh, this is my mattify. It's a silicon, silicons, I'm gonna put a link up to Lab Muffin. She um, dissects silicones. They're one of the most amazing things for skin. This lets your skin breathe. It will mattify no matter if you've got really beautiful um, dark skin, like Sudanese skin, to albino pale skin, you cannot see this on a macro lens. And I wanna show you on her skin tone, and it's better than powder. It lasts, I'm, I'm timing it at least three times longer than a normal powder. But I'm just going to hit that zone and what you'll see, the shine just completely goes. And the skin just feels like velvet. So this is a very simple, beautiful looking natural skin. We'll give you all the links to the products. Thank you, Jasmine. She has to run to work now, so I have to let her go.